Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a somewhat intriguing proposition that tries to explain some of the quirks of the solar system by basically suggesting that something must have passed through it billions of years ago. And specifically by suggesting a planetary flyby that could easily explain everything about the solar system orbits and the unexplained observations in regards to eccentricity and inclination. All discussed in the study you can find in the description by Garrett Brown, Renu Malhotra, and Hanno Rain. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's start with the problem first. And the problem here began approximately a decade ago. Because of extremely accurate observations by new telescopes, researchers started to discover a lot of distant objects whose orbits did not make a lot of sense. Here this was the discovery of several trans-Neptunian objects, or objects orbiting past Neptune, who seemed to possess very eccentric orbits, but were also clustered in a somewhat unusual way, as if something was influencing them. And eventually, within just a few years, this essentially became the Planet 9 hypothesis. You can obviously learn about this in some of the videos in the description, but in essence, this was a proposition for some kind of a hidden planet somewhere on the outskirts, possibly a few masses of planet Earth, that seems to be influencing the solar system in a lot of different ways, with the influence being not just these objects, but also the inner and outer planets. As a matter of fact, the Planet 9 hypothesis was also used to explain why certain planets have a little bit more eccentricity than they should have, and why certain planets, including planets like Jupiter, seem to have just a little bit more inclination. Or basically, if you were to look at the orbit of planets, and if you were to essentially put them in the same plane, all of them would actually be just a little bit tilted compared to the rotation of the Sun and compared to one another. You can actually see the inclination angle right here, and as you can see, pretty much all planets have at least some inclination. As if something did influence them through some kind of a gravitational interaction. And while at first this Planet 9 hypothesis did actually make a lot of sense, but the problem is that in the last decade, ever since the search started, there's been nothing discovered so far. And so even though Planet 9 potentially explained some of this, the evidence for the existence of this hypothetical planet was actually declining over time. And though in 2016 the likelihood of its existence was approximately 90%, by 2020, once we got even more observations, that chance decreased to below 2%. And the biggest reason here was the Outer Solar System Origins Survey by the Dark Energy Telescope that essentially discovered hundreds of new trans-Neptunian objects instead of the original 14 used for the Planet 9 hypothesis, they were now suggesting that there was no clustering, no unusual patterns, and there was no need for Planet 9 to exist or to explain anything. Yet despite of this, the inclinations of planets and the eccentricity of planets was still there, which basically suggested that maybe there was some kind of a additional perturbance or some kind of an event in the ancient solar system that possibly caused some of the planets to basically misalign just a little bit. And that something had to happen after the planetary formation and also be powerful enough to basically nudge Jupiter, because in this case even Jupiter has a little bit of inclination and a little bit of eccentricity. And so now in this new study, researchers propose a relatively good explanation that does have a pretty high chance of being correct. And the reason it has a chance of being correct is for an entirely different reason based on the evidence we got from the James Webb Space Telescope. The video in the description below talks a little bit more about this, but one of the recent observations from the James Webb, focusing on the Orion Nebula, discovered a tremendous number of really exciting objects. But much more importantly, it discovered hundreds of different rogue planets and various types of brown dwarfs, including bizarre objects known as jumbos. Very strange binary objects, all several masses of Jupiter in mass, and all traveling with a partner. We potentially know how these were formed, and this was explained in the video in the description, but in essence, by discovering hundreds and hundreds of these really massive planets, this essentially confirmed one thing. A lot of different nebula and a lot of star-forming regions seem to be filled with rogue planets, and a lot of them are really massive. And many of these massive objects pass really close to various stars, even going through disks of developing stars, which of course disturbs them in the process. And intriguingly, a lot of these substellar objects don't even have to come from other star systems. Many of them seem to actually form naturally from just your typical interstellar gas, but just don't get enough mass to become stars, instead becoming brown dwarfs and rogue planets. And that was actually the discovery from the James Webb. 
These objects seem to be extremely numerous and basically everywhere. Especially everywhere in various star-forming regions. And obviously the solar system formed in one of these regions as well. Some kind of an open star cluster that very likely existed for at least 10 million years and then dispersed after 100 million years with every star becoming its own object. But during this period, many of these stars very likely received these unusual gas. And so in the study researchers did the math and wanted to find out how likely is such a passage and, if it happens, how likely would it result in a solar system where planets have solar system-like inclinations and solar system-like eccentricities. But to do this they had to conduct n-body simulations of approximately 50,000 flybys. And intriguingly, out of these 50,000 cases, at least 422, or just under 1%, seem to actually produce solar systems whose values were extremely close to the real solar system, implying that this was actually not that unlikely. Now, 1 in 100 might not seem like much, but for explanations involving the solar system, right now this is actually the highest chance we have compared to everything else. In other words, according to this study, there is a 1 in 100 chance that some kind of an interstellar object, very likely a really massive rogue planet or a brown dwarf, passed through the early solar system in the first 20 million years, disturbing it in such a way that it produced the orbital eccentricities and inclinations we observe today. And though obviously we have no idea where and how it passed, the best possible scenario involves something that's approximately 8.27 masses of Jupiter, or essentially a typical rogue planet, and in this case passing through the solar system somewhere between planet Earth and Mars at 1.7 astronomical units, with a velocity of 2.7 km per second and the inclination of 131 degrees, or at least within approximately 20 astronomical units and a velocity not exceeding 6 km per second. And in this case, any of these passages would disturb all of the planets including the inclination and eccentricity for Jupiter, the most massive planet. Which by itself is of course intriguing, because not only does this not require Planet 9 or any additional exotic explanation, it also directly connects to observations from the James Webb, where hundreds of these objects were discovered in just the last few months. And so obviously we know these objects are very common and they extremely likely influence nearby stars. As a matter of fact here, pretty much all of the objects discovered were actually in a similar mass range, only different by a few masses of Jupiter. And so here we have a very bizarre connection between a theoretical prediction and actual physical evidence. And so here by being able to reproduce all of the modes and amplitudes in the entire solar system, the researchers provided a really simple but a very effective explanation on why the solar system is just a little bit different from what's expected. And intriguingly, the chance for this flyby does increase over time. As a matter of fact, before the star cluster dissipates, or before 100 million years, the chance becomes something like 1 in 10. And so this is definitely something that could have happened and might explain what we're seeing. But obviously we have no idea what exactly passed through the solar system or when it happened. Right now we don't really know of any means to discover any evidence for this, but I'm sure that in the next few years someone might find some way, for example using asteroids, on how this could be investigated further and potentially proven. And that's because we know that previous studies on asteroids have already discovered ways to study the past of the solar system in some really exciting ways. You can actually learn about one of these studies in the description but there was one event that we covered that seems to have happened four and a half billion years ago that actually involved some kind of a really powerful star emission from a nearby neighbor that seems to have transformed certain asteroids, making them enriched in certain isotopes. Likewise, we also have signs of ancient supernova and even nearby supernova that happened in those first few millions of years. But when it comes to a planet passing through the solar system, right now there is no direct evidence. But there is actually one more question that's tackled here. And that's the question of how likely is such an event to potentially steal and kick out one of the planets from the solar system, making it escape and essentially become a rogue planet as well. And while the evidence here suggests a relatively high probability of survival of terrestrial planets, but maybe a 2% chance that something did get ejected and escape the solar system. And in previous models it has been suggested that there was an escape planet and so maybe this is how it happened. But that's of course just a hypothesis and there is no evidence for that either. But either way, this new hypothesis basically challenges some of the previous theories, but also tries to explain a lot of complexity of the solar system with just one single event. 
a close encounter with some kind of a really large planet, or a brown dwarf, very likely in the first 20 million years. But it will probably take some time and additional papers, and very likely papers trying to disprove this, before we can come to any conclusions. And so, until then, thank you for watching, check out some of the previous videos in the description, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learn about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.